pretty much other butterflies also. But um, mm -hmm. I, I did want to tell you that if you guys have any questions at any time, feel free to just jump right in. You know, whoever, if you're on video, just unmute yourself and jump right in. Um, mm -hmm. I like, I'd rather this be a conversation than a lecture. So if we can talk, that'd be great. Um, any questions or any comments? You know, you guys have lots mm -hmm. of experience with butterflies, I'm sure, in your life. So you get a chance. Oh, yeah. Jump in. Speaking okay. of butterflies, uh, speaking of butterflies, I once painted a butterfly. And Did you say painted a butterfly? Uh, yes, I once uh, drew a butterfly and painted it. Okay, I thought you took a butterfly and painted its wings or something. No, 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 it's multicolored. Well, you know what? Since you brought that up, Daryl, or I kind of brought it up, I'll tell you a funny story. When I was a really little kid starting to learn about butterflies and insects and stuff, mm -hmm. and you guys mm -hmm. probably know by now that I'm a nature geek, so I had like a butterfly collection and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I found a butterfly, and I can't remember which kind it was. This is a really, really long time ago. And I read in a book that they have powder on their wings. And I caught mm -hmm. this butterfly and I remember my father saying, you shouldn't handle them because the, you know, the powder comes off and then they can't fly. Mm -hmm. So I handled this butterfly and I could see all the spaces where the, the powder came off. So I, I went mm -hmm. to the medicine chest and took baby powder and poured it on the butterfly. Mm -hmm. That was gonna help him fly better. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I've got lots of stories like that from when I was a kid, you know, you just don't really Isn't understand. Isn't that funny how kids, their yeah. brains kind of put, put two and two together and get 12 sometimes. Yep. Yeah. So it, it, the other thing that's interesting, it, it turns out that you could actually take all the scales off a butterfly and he could still fly. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but I like it when they look like, look really nice. So let's jump into, let's see, what's the first thing? Here we go. I'm going to share. Hold on, I did that wrong. I have to go to share. And we'll go to PowerPoint. There we go. And we'll go to from beginning. From beginning. Come on, there we go. All right, can everybody see that? Is anybody out there? <laughs> I can see it. You're, you're good. Yeah, good. It's up. I just want to make sure. I know I can see it on mine. I just want to make sure you guys can see it. All right. So we are going to talk about monarch butterflies. And right in, if you had a screen, you'd be able to see I have a picture of a monarch right here. And before we get into butterflies in general, I want to get into the basics that a butterfly is actually an insect. Mm -hmm. And the way you know, we know it's an insect, an insect has three main body parts. Mm -hmm. Of course, it has others, but the three main body parts are a head, mm -hmm. a thorax, which is like the chest area, and the mm -hmm. abdomen, which is the back end. And mm -hmm. if you've ever looked at an ant really close, you could very easily see the difference, or a wasp. You could see the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. Some butterflies, mm -hmm. It's not as prominent because their abdomen actually seems like it's attached without a separation from the, from the thorax, but there are definitely three separate parts. And um, anybody out there know how many legs an insect has? Six. Six, that must've been Ruth, right? That was Ruth. Thank you, Ruth. Yeah, yeah so three, yeah. Body, three main body parts and six legs is what makes an insect. So mm -hmm. like if you go outside and you turn over a rock and you ever see those little roly polies, those little gray things that walk around. Well, that's not an insect. Mm -hmm. A lot of people consider it an insect because it crawls around on the floor, but that's not one. A bee is an insect, butterflies are insects, mm -hmm. beetles are mm -hmm. insects and so on. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it has to have those, th those characteristics, a head, a thorax and abdomen and six legs. So mm -hmm. does anybody out there want to guess is a spider an insect? Um, the spider's an arachnid. Ah, so it's not an insect. How many yeah. legs does a spider have? Eight. All right, guys. So I think you get the idea, right? Mm -hmm. So the next picture I have here is a picture of a monarch. And I have this picture here 
to give you a basic idea of what a monarch looks like. It's very bright. And I was just actually just reading a little while ago, and I, I never, I always wonder where, where they get the names for things, especially plants. And a lot of times it's interesting mm -hmm. to hear the, the history. So it, it turned mm -hmm. out that um, one of the kings over in England, they called mm -hmm. him the orange monarch because he would always wear orange, really bright orange. Mm -hmm. And they believe that that's where the monarch butterfly got its name from. Well, this monarch, if you can see, it actually has two little dots on the back wings. So that means this is a male monarch butterfly. Mm -hmm. Now, the next slide is a picture of the underside of the monarch. And this was taken on a butterfly bush. And the underside looks a lot different. So when the wings are folded up on a monarch, it does look different than when the wings are open. But again, that pattern is very specific to a monarch, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, there are butterflies that look very similar to a monarch. And the picture I'm showing you now is a, a viceroy butterfly. Now, most mm -hmm. people, when they see that, they say, oh, there's a monarch. But if you put one next to each other, you could really see the difference. And this is actually an example of something called mimicry. So it turns out that monarch butterflies are very, are toxic. And if a bird eats them, they'll get sick and they don't really taste very good. So as soon as, once a bird tries to eat a monarch, they learn that by looking at that color pattern, I'm not going to eat that butterfly anymore because it's disgusting and it's going to make me sick. So somehow it's not, I'm sure it wasn't a conscious choice through evolution but other butterflies happen to get that same type of pattern and they look like monarchs, mm -hmm. but yet they're not mm -hmm. toxic butterflies, but the birds still think they are. So scientists mm -hmm. call that mimicry mm -hmm. and yeah. they basically try to mimic or not really try, but they mimic other butterflies or other creatures that are not, um, not something something wants to eat this way. That's a, it's mm -hmm. just basically a way of surviving, okay? And again, if you guys have any questions, jump in or any comments. So one of the really coolest things about a monarch compared to other butterflies is monarch butterflies migrate huge distances. And the reason is, you know, if you think about it, there are basically a couple of strategies for a way for an insect to survive the winter. Insects are cold blooded. So as the temperature drops, their body temperature drops, which means they can't digest food, they can't find food, they really sometimes mm -hmm. can't even move. I'll tell you another really interesting kid story about when I first learned about cold-blooded animals. I actually had a garter snake in a 10-gallon tank as a pet. And when I learned about mm -hmm. the fact that a snake was cold-blooded, it happened to be wintertime and it was about two feet of snow on the ground. So just for the heck of it, I brought him outside to see what would happen. And he got freaked out and he started to slither away really fast. Then as soon as his body temperatures dropped, he started to slow down really slow till eventually he got to the point where he just stopped moving. There, cold blooded means that your body temperature changes with the ambient temperature of the air or the ground that you're in, or if you're a fish or whatever, the water. If you live in the ocean, the water or a lake or a pond. Um, so if you have any questions about what cold blood it is. So there's a couple of ways to survive. One is to hibernate. One is to migrate. And believe it or not, some species actually use death as a way of surviving the winter. Now that may seem crazy. If you're dead, you're not surviving. But in nature, it's not about the individual. It's about the species. So. If an insect lays eggs and right after it lays eggs, it dies. When the larva hatch from that insect, those insect eggs in the spring, it'll actually have a supply of food right there because you know the parent actually sacrificed itself. So believe it or not, dying is a way of surviving, which is, seems a little crazy, but lots of insects use strategy. They'll lay eggs, they'll die, they'll leave themselves as food and so on. Okay. Mm -hmm. But monarchs decided that migrating was the best way to go. And if you think about the size of a monarch butterfly, 
or really any other butterfly. Well, I think I can just fly a food right there because, you know, the pattern actually sacrificed itself. I'm sorry, can you say that again, please? I think it was just a, it was like a repeat of what you just said, I think. It was like an echo. Oh, okay. So monarchs decided that migrating was the best way to go. So in the winter time up north in the Northern hemisphere, it's colder. So heading south is the way to go. Now, what I have is a picture of the United States with a bunch of red lines on it and pictures of monarch butterflies showing the directions that they migrate. Some of them go down to Florida. Some of them, actually most of them go down to Mexico, believe it or not. So imagine a monarch butterfly that lives in Canada. It starts to get cold and he wants to migrate. He's going all the way down to Mexico to survive the winter. Then, of course, in the springtime when it warms up, which is the next slide. Oops, I hit it backwards. Sorry. Basically, you can see the lines. Down, down the other direction. So they go from south to north. And the reason they do that is they go to find food. You know, the reason animals migrate is basically it's for survival. Even a warm blooded animal, like if in the, sun, in the wintertime, if you go outside, you'll look for certain kinds of birds and you won't see them around here in North Carolina anymore. They move south because they, their food source is not available at the time. Like we know in the wintertime, there's no flowers. So obviously a butterfly, even if it wasn't cold blood, it wouldn't be able to feed on anything because there was nothing to feed on. So it would have to go south. Insect eating birds, for instance, insect eating birds. The insects are cold blooded. They're either hibernating or they, they moved out of there's no insects to eat. You know, unless you're a woodpecker, there are certain insects that can stay on um, certain birds that can stay around here like woodpeckers because they dig into the into the bark looking for larva. Um, there are seed eating butterflies, for instance, ones are really thick beaks like cardinals. The cardinals never leave my area. If you put out a bird video, you know, with the time you're going to get a ton of cardinals. They have really thick beaks that for breaking seeds. And most of the plants that have seeds usually hold on to them pretty long over the winter time. Um, goldfinches are a big one. Right now they're eating all the thistle seeds and they're eating all the echinacea seeds. It's really cool if you spend some time just you know going outside and observing what they're doing. Okay. So that's a little bit about um, that's a little bit about migration. So what happens is when they go down to Mexico, they actually all seem to go to a couple of different places, which means if you go to that place, you will literally see millions of monarch butterflies all hanging out together. Now, what on the screen right now, for those who can't see, it's a picture of a, looks like some kind of an evergreen tree, possibly a spruce with just dozens of monarch butterflies in the frame. And the next picture actually shows the trunk of a tree and the whole trunk is completely filled with monarch butterflies. Now, what's interesting is when they go down to Mexico, they actually go down to a place in the mountains. And it wasn't until really relatively recently that somebody actually discovered the place where monarchs go and they, they walked into this grove and there was just you know millions and millions of monarchs hanging out basically on top of each other really so they get together and they stay warm that way um and they they usually on the south side of the tree usually find them so when the sun comes up they get warm um and here's another photo that just shows bushes and trees and you can barely even see the leaves there's like really hundreds of thousands of monarchs in that area Okay. Any questions about the migration? Not just of monarchs or of anything. If you have any questions about that, feel free. All right. So I'm just going to jump on to. So butterflies are classified in a bunch of different ways. One is the way they're shaped, what they look like, you know, the wings and stuff like that. But they're also sometimes categorized by what they eat. And remember I said before that monarchs 
are poisonous, so birds don't eat them. They happen to be what are called milk, milkweed butterflies. And milkweed butterflies feed or actually lay their eggs on milkweed plants, plants in the milkweed family. Because if you've ever seen it, one of the reasons they're called milkweed, if you break a branch, I mean a leaf off or a branch or whatever, a white, thick white sap that people used to think was like a milk coming out of the plant. So they called it a milkweed, right? Pretty practical way back then, people. So the caterpillar actually feeds on the, the milkweed, takes in the toxins. It's not affected by the toxins, but the toxins are in its body. So therefore the caterpillars are toxic and the birds won't eat them. And the butterflies, once they metamorphose or change into a butterfly, the butterfly is also toxic, okay? So this is a common picture of a common milkweed. This is the plant itself. And I have pictures of this plant going through the whole season or the whole year. This way, if you were able to see these, like right now, the milk, milkweed looks a lot different than it did in the spring. And I'll just go through these. So this is a plant in the springtime before it even flowers, okay? This next picture is a milkweed with the flower buds not open yet. And here's another one. And actually, if you were looking, there's a spot here where I actually accidentally broke one of the flowers off and you could see the milk actually pouring out of the plant. So even the flowers actually have some, the milk stems, I mean, the flower stems actually have the milk in it also, okay? Now, when they flower, these beautiful violet or purple flowers open up and they're really, really fragrant. I let, I have three big patches of milkweed around my property that I let grow. I make sure I don't mow around it because I know where they're going to be every year. And one, I do that for the butterflies to hope to help the migrating monarchs have food and a place to lay their eggs. And for two, if you've ever been in a patch of milkweed in heaven, the smell is intoxicating. It's just the whole air. I'm sometimes in the morning or in the afternoon, I'll just go out there in the, on a sunny day and I'll just stand in the middle and just breathe in the fragrance. It's so, it's just so delicious smelling. Okay. So it's a really beautiful, beautiful plant. And it's funny because most people hate this plant because they consider it a weed. And I'm sure you've heard me say this before in some of my talks that the difference between a flower and a weed is a matter of perspective. And this is just another picture of the flowers of the monarch of the uh, milkweed. This is a common milkweed. There are other plants in the milkweed family. There's swamp milkweed. There's another picture. Let me show you here. Oh, never mind. I'll show you the, the picture in a second. But um, so once the flowers die back, you get these seed pods. And if you've ever seen these seed pods before, you'd know exactly what they look like. And even if it doesn't have flowers on it, you're not sure. But as soon as you see these seed pods, you can easily look at this plant. And of course, this time of the year, the seed pods, they dry up, they open up, and the seeds are dispersed by wind. They have a down, almost like a downy parachute, like a, like a dandelion seed. And so they're wind distributed. They wait for the wind to come by and blow them off. On a windy day, if you go out in my backyard, as these things are just flying all over the backyard, of course, my neighbors really hate me because they don't want these weeds in their yard. But these are very, these are actually a natural plant to be in North Carolina. And this is a picture of the flowers with other kinds of butterflies on it. These are called flitteraries. And these, just to show you that it's, Letting monarch, letting um milkweed. I keep saying monarchs instead of milkweed. <laughs> making if you making milkweed plants grow on your property is not only good for monarchs, but it's also a great pollinator. There's literally thousands of bees in my backyard when these things are in bloom. Every kind of bee and wasp and you, that you can imagine. These are really great pollinator plants, and it's the fact that I'm the only one in the area that actually allows these things to grow. I think I have every butterfly in Silas City that comes to my house. 
which is really pretty cool. Nice. So there are other insects that actually inhabit the milkweed plant. And this is actually, these are immature milkweed bugs. And milkweed bugs are kind of funny because if they see you coming, they run around the other side of the plant. And then if you wait there like a minute or so, they'll actually come back around, they'll poke their head around to see if you're still there before they, and they actually suck the juices out of the milkweed pods and leaves, okay? Now here's another plant. If you looked at the flowers, you'd see that they're a different color. These are orange, but they're exactly the same shape. So this is definitely also in the milkweed family, but this is called butterfly weed. That's one of the common names. The other common name is pleurisy root because a long time ago, it actually used to be used for lung infections like pleurisy and pneumonia. So they would use the root. So this is called pleurisy root or butterfly weed. And it's called butterfly weed because again, it attracts lots and lots of butterflies, okay? And here's a, just a close up of the flowers, so you can see that they're pretty much the same. You could just by looking at the flowers when you when you start to learn different plants, you can see just by the flowers that this is in the same family as a, as the common milkweed. And like I said, the swamp milkweed has flowers that look just like this. All right, so now we're going to get into the whole process of metamorphosis. So like I said, right now on the screen, for those who can't see, there's a picture of a monarch egg. I actually watched the butterfly deposit this egg. Of course, I knew where it was and I ran in and I got my camera to take pictures of it. So the eggs are very, very tiny, very, very tiny. You could barely see them. So this is a really, this is a real close up. So the egg is deposited on the milkweed plant on the leaves, on the underside of the leaves, because most insects lay eggs on the underside of the leaf. So things that are flying by like birds or other insects can't easily see it. Plus it's not baking in the sun. We don't want, you know, monarch eggs over easy. We want them to just, we want them to be able to hatch, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So when they, when the eggs hatch, it turns into a caterpillar. Mm -hmm. And a caterpillar is basically an eating machine. Mm -hmm. And what it does is just devours the leaves on the milkweed plant. And while it's doing that, it's getting in that milky sap. Milky sap has the toxins in it. So once a but you know, once a bird tries to eat a monarch caterpillar, he knows not to ever eat one again. So they actually recognize the stripes. It's the yellow, white, and black stripes. It looks like it has two horns, one on each end. I mean, two horns on each end. And you would never know because this doesn't look like an insect and it really technically isn't at this point. It has a head and a really long body parts and it has lots of legs. It has more than two antenna, so it has more than two legs. But through the miracle of metamorphosis, this will eventually change into a butterfly. So there's another picture. And I do want to show you, let's see if we get there. Let me get, I want to go back one. I'm going to try to share something a little different. Stop share there. And I want to show you a video of a monarch caterpillar eating a milkweed. Is that in view, everyone? Oh, well. Krista, <laughs> can you see that video? Yeah. I can okay, see good. It. So if you were watching if you were watching this guys, you basically see what he does. He just starts, he grabs on with the his, his back legs mostly and just moves his head back and forth and just devours that leaf. And I remember I couldn't find it really quickly today, but I actually took a video of this. It was like about 20 minutes long and I condensed it into three minutes and the thing went just like a little, you know, like a chainsaw basically ate that leaf away. It was really cool. So what's in the video now, guys, is a, a caterpillar devouring a leaf and you can see it's a milkweed plant because of the flowers. Looks like this. Oh, and there's a milkweed bug at the top. 
Yeah. And that's the end of the video. So let's see, stop sharing that. And let's go back to sharing, there we go. I'm kind of slide. Okay. All right, so let's see next. So eventually there's all kinds of chemical reactions that happen inside the caterpillar to let it, I mean, it doesn't have like a brain where it's conscious of now it's time to turn into a chrysalis or a cocoon, right? So basically when a butterfly turns into a chrysalis, we call it a chrysalis, but when a moth usually turns into a chrysalis, we call it a cocoon, it basically wraps itself in, in silk. So the next slide is a picture of a monarch chrysalis. And it's a light green color with a with beautiful markings, the black and yellow across the top. And you can't see it very well in this picture, but it has these little golden dots all over it. And inside this chrysalis, that caterpillar is actually turning into a butterfly. And it happens a lot quicker than you think. Oh no, what happened? It says that you've got to the end of the slideshow for some reason. Oh. Oh, no. Come on, guys. I'm going to close this and close this and find out. You guys give me a minute. I have a, the whole rest of my slideshow. I don't know where it went. Give me a second here. Okay. Documents. Programs. I might have this in two. I, I apologize, guys. I don't know what happened to that. For some reason, I picked the wrong one. Oh, it happens. <laughs> and mm -hmm. Andy's saying, been there, done that. So <laughs> you're not alone uh, on that, especially if, if you I was actually a working. On, I was actually working on it this morning, and I added a whole bunch of new slides. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know that I've had, I went through the pollinator class that, um, Debbie Ruse did a couple, well, I want to say a couple years back, but it's been longer. <laughs> and uh, was able to get some milkweed from the class that was growing it for a little bit, but um, it's it's pretty neat when they lay. Yeah, the it's really cool. Oh man, I can't believe, I don't know what happened. So I added like 10 different slides to this this morning. Let me make sure. Let's see. Let's so, has anyone that. listening grown milkweed or had milkweed grow <laughs> in their mm -hmm. in their yard or in a container that they've got? <laughs> They're like what weeds in our yard? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. You know what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump to 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 share on something else. I apologize with that. So, mm. what happened? A, a while ago, actually at the, at the senior center, one of the girls, actually the, one of the girls that was in Krista's position a while back, she came in one day and actually had a, a, a monarch chrysalis and we brought it in and I actually attached it to a stick and we watched it over the days. And when, so I took some pictures of it and, and when it started to turn, and luckily I have this because I had these, all these pictures. Again, I apologize, but um, I'm gonna try to share this with you. And it's basically a slideshow of the progression of, we, we named it Crystal, Crystal the Monarch Caterpillar. So let's see if I can get this to work. Full size, front. Okay, let's see if this plays. And you can turn up your music if you like.
So if you were looking at this, you'd actually be able to see that the crystals are starting to turn clear. And when it does, you could actually see the butterfly inside the chrysalis. When you know, when you see that happen, you know that it's about to hatch. I'm having kind of a hard time seeing it. I'm just seeing an orange square. I don't know. Andy, are you still on or do you see an orange square? Or do you see the video? Because it might be just me. Okay, it's showing on mine. Yeah, I'm not, it's it's strange. Yeah, he's yeah he's seeing orange square as well. Oh really? Oh man, this is really messing up. Okay. So the, you know, he I'll, says I'll, the music's pretty though, <laughs> which is true. <laughs> All right, how can I get this to do? Let me see. It says new share. What does that mean? Uh, maybe started to share a different thing from your screen. So. Oh, that's better. Okay, so you guys missed the whole thing? Maybe that's part. I like skipped away for a second. I've been going back and forth from screen to screen. Hey, Andy, but there we go. Yeah, we can see it. Yeah. Yeah, and Andy can see it now too. Sorry, yeah. I don't know why that happened. All right, so I'm just, well, you already, you've already seen pictures of the cat, the eggs and the caterpillar and stuff like that. So I'm just going to go through from this point where the chrysalis actually starts to turn clear. And you could start to see the butterfly inside when it really turns clear. You could really even, there you go. You could see the butterfly completely folded up inside the colors and everything. So this, when you know it's gonna hatch. And this is just different angles and you can see the wing of the butterfly right there. It's amazing, it's like, you ever buy something in a box and try to undo it and then you pull it apart and you can never get it back in? So what it does is the wings all fold it up so it hangs on the chrysalis or on a branch and it slowly pumps liquid, whether it's blood or not, into the wings till they open up and they dry and then it's able to fly away because when it first comes out, it can't fly away. It's actually very vulnerable. That's neat. And it, you know, eventually it starts to get its, you know, sea legs and it starts to move around a little bit and then it flies away. <laughs> That's neat you're able to catch all of that. That's really cool. All right, stop share on that. Well, guys, let me try to uh, get rid of this again here. Hold on. And Andy had had a suggestion about finding recovering your work in PowerPoint. Yes, you have. Go for it, Andy. It said uh, in PowerPoint, you may might be able to recover your work. Go to Home, then Info, then Version History. Okay, that's a good point. Let me uh, see if I can do that. You know, documents, science programs. Monarchs. See, this is not, yeah, this is definitely not the one. I must have saved it in another place because I, I don't have the beginning slide that I made this morning up on this one. The one that says, where would it be? Hmm. Yeah, I've done that before. Anyway. What time is it? Well, it's 11.51 anyway. 11.51. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I, I apologize about the... Let me see. Not on my desktop. No, it's not on the desktop. Sometimes I if I go about... into my recents. Yeah, let's see. You can do that. Sometimes if you just open your file explorer, it'll show some recent stuff you've been to. Where do I find recents? Um, you'll sometimes have like, if you open up your, like a folder, the file explorer folder, sometimes you'll see recent files and there'll be a bunch. And sometimes there'll be the recent folders over on the left side, um, but it kind of varies. All right, so if I go to science programs. 
Yeah. Oh well. Anyway. <laughs> That's all right. It happens. Yeah. Well, it, it's pretty much almost time anyway. Um, basically, um, I had pictures of other butterflies and things like that, and in different parts of the plants. But um, yeah, so that's pretty much it about monarchs, guys. If anybody has uh, any questions, and I, I highly recommend if you you know you could actually put a milkweed plant in a pot on your porch or on your steps or something like that, mm -hmm. and I pretty much guarantee you're going to get butterflies, if, if not a monarch. I got to tell you, with all the monarch plant, I mean, the, oh yeah, I said it again, with all the milkweed plants that I have on my property, I've only seen, I saw one caterpillar, which was in the middle of the summer, and I went out the next day and I couldn't find it, didn't know where it went, and I've only seen one chrysalis, and believe it or not, the chrysalis is in the chicken coop, it's not even on the plant. So a lot of times the caterpillar will actually move from the host plant to a branch or someplace where it thinks it's a little bit safer, maybe. Yeah. That's in the open. And it'll, what it does is just grabs on with its back feet and it starts to metamorphose. And like yeah. if it's a moth, for instance, and some other butterflies, they'll actually weave themselves a cocoon of silk around themselves for protection. And monarchs actually hatch pretty quickly. That's because they migrate. A lot of times, like moths and other butterflies, they'll actually make their cocoons maybe underneath a log or underneath some leaf litter. And they'll actually overwinter in that pupil stage. And then when it gets warm enough to heat them up, they'll actually hatch into a butterfly or a moth at that point. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's cool. All right, so Andy said that this gives us, you not being able to get back to those basically gives us another reason to get back together soon. And then suggested mm -hmm. that after we get done with the program to try going to home and it should show a list of the last 10 to 12 files and their locations in a list on the main part of the screen. Home, what do I, what do you mean home? Where's like home? Like the little, the little windows button, I think is what he's talking about. Windows button, All right. Yeah, mind if, if you don't, if you guys want to get off, that's fine. But I'm <laughs> All right. I'm a, little, I'm a little not happy that this happened. So where do I find? It's fine. Home? Yeah, and we could go ahead and stop the stream if you want to say bye to folks. <laughs> All right. Yeah, let's do that, guys. Um, well, I appreciate you coming on, and hopefully you were able to at least verbally hear some things about mm -hmm. monarchs. And I, I encourage you really to go out and spend some time outside. I know you guys are pretty much stuck in your houses. As, but you know you can go walk around your house and go out and look mm -hmm. at plants and so on. But um, yeah, I appreciate you coming, guys, and hopefully we'll see you next time.